Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Sound 101. Today's episode is all about picking the right microphone for the right space that you're shooting in. Most people think it's something as simple as just grab a shotgun microphone and go, right? I mean, that's what video people use, shotguns. It's not that simple. And you can actually get better audio by not buying a shotgun. Who knew? We love shotgun microphones. We specialize in shotgun microphones here but they're not always the best for the room. So what we've done is we built a virtual bathroom. That's right, say hello to my bathroom. We've actually tested the reverb of a hard surface to kind of understand what the volume of reverb is versus the source. We've now mimicked that through this speaker and by moving the speaker at a further distance away from us, we can now mimic the size of different rooms. This one speaker will act like a gigantic brick wall for us but for the purposes, it's, it's a speaker. Now, what's really cool about our setup is we're able to change the different microphones without actually having to worry about the space changing at all based on anything that we've added to the space like cameras, sound equipment, or different kind of setups. Our bathroom is locked into place. So we're gonna be testing and showing you guys different capsules and different interference tubes in different spaces. Remember, we've said on this channel a lot, more ports, bigger space, less ports, smaller space. And this is a live demo of that philosophy. So what we've got is actually an omnidirectional microphone. Now this is gonna pick up the maximum amount of reverb. It is the worst selection of all microphones with a reverb-y kind of room. So let's give this a listen. This is what a bathroom would sound like if you use an omnidirectional microphone. As you can probably hear, there is a lot of reverb in this room, and it definitely does not sound clean. If I were to take this in the, say, post-production, I would have to do a lot of audio cleanup, and in all honesty, it probably wouldn't get all that cleaned up. I mean, this is a very dirty signal, and I don't know if you can make it much better in post. So let's take a look at what this would now sound like with a cardioid capsule. So now what you're actually listening to is a cardioid capsule in a bathroom. So if you were to do a Twitch stream from a bathroom, this would not be a bad choice for microphones. Uh, as you can see, still kind of the same distance I've been around. We haven't moved anything. We haven't even adjusted the gain on the board. Everything is the same, and yet the sound is significantly better. But what if I told you it can get better than this? This will give you an idea of what a hypercardioid sounds like. Uh, at this point, you probably don't hear any reverb at all, if any. It's gonna sound like a bathroom. And this sounds very good, very clean, even if we were in a bathroom and we said, hey, Let's do a, just do a hypercard it. It's gonna work just fine. Now you may say, what about a shotgun? Let's go all the way up. Let's add the interference tube. Let's find out what a shotgun is going to end up doing to this uh, bathroom scenario that we're in. Now we're in a bathroom. And you can see immediately the interference tube is doing one thing right off the back and that is amplifying my voice. It is focusing my voice right down that tube. But it's also, introducing something that's not reverb. Do you hear what it is? Have you figured out exactly what you're hearing that's not reverb that doesn't sound quite right? It's simple, what you're hearing right now is actually phasing issues on a single microphone. Now, how can that be? How can one microphone give you phase issues? It's the actual interference tube doing that. An interference tube works by actually taking audio out of phase, delaying it, so the time it hits from the exact same time that the source hits, it has actually been phase canceled out. But what happens when it's the same source as you? When it's the same source coming back from the mouth and off our fake wall? What happens is my voice comes in just fine. But so does the reverb and it starts to get phased out too and timed slightly different. So it starts to hit the negative sine wave as it times my positive sine waves for the next syllables coming out of my mouth. And they start to cancel each other out because they're in the same frequency spectrum because it's all my voice. And that's what happens when you use a shotgun in a bathroom. It doesn't sound like a bathroom. It doesn't sound like anything. It sounds kind of just strange and odd. Now you can fix this if you have a shorter shotgun. And let's show you what that sounds like. This is a shorter shotgun. Now you may say immediately, this sounds like a hypercardioid. No, this is still a super cardioid, but because the interference tube is now only about two and a half inches, instead of the full five inches that the full size shotgun is, you don't get nearly the same phasing issues. And yet, you still get a little bit. So hypercardioid in a bathroom. 
I think that's kind of a decisive factor. We can all hear the difference between the five different pickup patterns uh, between a long supercardioid, short supercardioid, hypercardioid, cardioid, and omni. Ow. My mouth is dry. So the phasing issues that come from having a long interference tube versus short interference tube aren't nearly as severe. They don't sound nearly as good as no interference tube at all hypercardioids. But man, what a really different sounding microphone just by changing the interference tube. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna move our speaker and create a bigger room. I don't have a long enough cable. So what we've now built is our make-believe living room. I can no longer touch it. It's not a small space. It's a much bigger space. This could even be a bedroom. And what we're still using is the S-Mic2S. This kind of a space has a ability to kind of still have some reverb, but a short interference tube does not seem to care one bit. Now you may say to yourself, what about a long interference tube? Would that give us some reverb, some issues? So let's turn this now 90 degrees to our speaker, our hard wall surface. And we can kind of listen now as I talk to you, do you still hear some mega reverb or do you hear any kind of odd phasing issues? You may have a little reverb, it may sound natural, but do you have phasing issues? And that's the critical thing. I don't think I hear any phasing issues, just a tiny bit of a little bit of reverb. So let's give a listen now to a long shotgun. I don't think I hear anything in the large space at all. Nothing like I heard when it was right close to us. So both microphones work indoors in this kind of a space, though some work better in even smaller spaces. If I were to split the difference and put the speaker halfway there, you actually still may hear some of that kind of reverb-ish kind of phasing sound that we were hearing in the bathroom. Now in the larger space, this doesn't seem to be an issue one bit. If I were to move the speaker even double the distance even further, I think you would hear almost absolutely nothing whatsoever in the terms of reverb. Now, again, this space does have some things like objects and chairs and everything, but so do real spaces. This isn't trying to be a dry test for demonstration purposes, but trying to give you some real world applications without us having to actually go anywhere and leave our office because we're lazy. Now, you may say to yourself, what if I owned a hypercarded? Would that work in a space like this? Potentially, honestly, potentially. It is all about ceiling height at the end of the day. If you have a space and you have a low ceiling, a hypercarded might actually be perfect for you. Because if you don't forget, reflections from the sidewalls is important, but a back lobe on the backside of a supercardioid may pick up reflections from your ceiling. Again, in this space, we don't have a problem. A hypercardioid in this space may be good, or a short shotgun may be even more perfect in this space because its back lobe is even smaller than a long microphone's back lobe. So let's take a listen to what a hypercardio would sound like. Mic check one, two. Hey, there we are. So now what you're listening to is the board feed with the hypercardioid capsule attached. And at this point, you probably hear zero reverb at all, zero phasing issues at all. This probably is one of the cleanest microphones you could use indoors. And that's why a lot of sound mixers use hypercardioids indoors, or sometimes even cardioids if they need to pick up two people. I was actually working on a set as a boom operator for someone else, and the director was very nervous about the room that we were shooting in. Uh, we were shooting in a very tight bathroom. I was laying in the bathtub, holding a little pistol grip, aimed at the guy sitting on the toilet, trying to get him talking while on a cell phone doing a FaceTime video. And the director has got this cramped frame. It's a cramped all up in this little small bathroom because we're shooting in a real bathroom. And the director hollers out to the sound mixer, how does it sound? And the sound mixer, without pause, looked back at the director and said, don't worry, it sounds like it looks. If you're shooting in a bathroom and it feels cramped, it's supposed to feel cramped, the actor feels cramped, the framing feels cramped, you can actually convey cramped even by adding some of that reverb in post or using a microphone that captures some of that kind of reverb. And there you have it. I think the optimal microphone, if you're shooting indoors, either a very short shotgun or a hypercarded, you can't go wrong with either. Both have their pluses, both have their minuses. Uh, I think the minuses to the hypercarded that we really didn't get into is sometimes hypercardioids are not nearly as sensitive as an interference tube microphone because they're not as focused. So that can be actually a downside. So you may need a recorder with proper gain staging to really allow you to boost the signal without having to boost self noise. Interference tube microphones don't always necessarily have the same issues. So to kind of wrap this all up, I don't think we need to do a cardioid or an omnidirectional at this distance. I think we've definitely proven the proper microphones for the proper size space. 
Hey, if you like this video and you want more from us, don't forget the bell for notifications. Whenever we post videos, you guys will be the first ones to find out. Drop a comment in the comment section below and tell us what microphones you like to use for different kinds of scenes and scenarios that you shoot in. Also, find us up on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, who knows? We may even start something like a Snapchat. Probably not, though, because I don't want to do it. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones, and thank you for watching.